Welcome, welcome to the the weekly show about a bunch of comic books coming from Tony Tony's at Tony's comic book closet. Actually, his it's Tony's bin sale. Actually, it's the formal title of it. So we're gonna shoot, show some highlights that I picked out from the hundred and seventeen entries of sales. We can't, as much as I want to show you all 117, I think Tony wants to go to bed, so we have to stop at some point. <laughs> but we didn't have a discussion point for today, so so we're just going to kick off and we'll come up with a discussion point for next week. So the all first right. one off my mind is Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. Yeah. You gotta love, it's frontier style comics, so... There's a genre of comics called Frontier Comics, and this fits right in there. And if you're looking for that weird genre of comics that no one collects, get Frontier Comics. Fess Parker. Yep. Right? I think that's Fess Parker. Nope. It's based off the TV series. Yeah. Our next our next on the list, this I, I've already read this Magnus the Robot Fighter, basically. Basically, he fights an alien robot from another dimension, and it's an interesting tale. It's a very good story. It, it reads very well, but there's a lot of Magnus robot fighter in this go around, and I wonder how fast those are going to go. It looks like Ming the Merciless. So we got a Ming rip off here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> looks like Max von Sydow from uh, the '80s version of uh, Flash Gordon. Yes. So. Look, we have a lot of different different Jack Kirby covers. We had a lot of commodity of the last Earth, but I picked this Forever People one because, well, this is like early, early. This is like issue ten, and it's early in his run. And then the Forever People are really good. Yeah, his uh, his covers are always nice and busy. Uh, lots of color, lots of expressions. He uh, he did some incredible covers. All right, next on the list. I've been picking up all the Blackhawks that I can get my hands on. This is the there was a lot of Blackhawk this go around, all DC based. So there are later runs of the Blackhawks after World War II. If you're you guys seem to like Sergeant Furry, so I'm saying give the Blackhawks a try. Yeah, yeah, they uh they had uh, the, that whole thing where they went from you know truly being World War II heroes, right? Because they think uh, they started out in um, what modern comics or something like that. Uh, during during World War II, or maybe slightly after it, and then uh, into the Cold War, and then they uh, did a whole thing where they were trying to transmogrify into like a superhero comic. You know, superhero comics were coming back in vogue, and you know there was a lot of covers about you know the Black Hawk. Are the Black Hawks done? You know uh, that kind of stuff. Where uh, I think they were losing their popularity. They still went on to have over I think two hundred issues. Yeah, it, it's definitely something to check out. <clears throat> Last week you had a lot of men from Uncle. I didn't see if they were selling, but the these old spy thrillers are fun to read. Yeah, the TV comics with the uh with the picture covers are always kind of kind of fun to look at too. Yeah. All right, we we have to talk about romance comics. You 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 have several romance comic options this go around. I picked one. This is from CDC, <laughs> that's from the 60s. It's romance comics. If you like that genre, it's a great genre to collect. There's a lot of valuable comics in that genre, but it's but it's also a genre that most comic book fans are going to be like, I'll pass. Yeah, it's definitely um, got a, a smaller subset of uh, people that buy from me uh, have an interest in them. But um, if they're not expensive, you know, they pick them up. I, I don't expect there are a lot of key issues other than, you know, maybe a first artist's work in the in the field, you know, it's not like it's the first appearance of, of Sally, you know, it's just, uh, there, there's, there is, that's kind of, kind of limit the value a little bit, but, um, I always like the looks of the, the early Marvel, um, uh, romance comics. I know there's something about them or bright and, you know, like John Romita and stuff like that. It was always fun to look at. Yeah. Next up we have house of secrets. This is a good horror theme. I didn't see much horror this go around, so I'm not expecting much in the way of horror to sell this go around. There were a couple witches and a couple random horror titles thrown in uh, from various other publishers, other than just DC. But this is a generally a decent horror title. Always has the secrets. Always a good read. I like the cover. The cover's awesome. You know, I've got the skeleton ruling over his death as he boxes. 
yeah, a bunch of bunch of horror comic books coming. Um, I got a a bunch of them recently from a couple of different sources. So I'm starting to put them together. It's the monkeys. Come hey, on. Hey. hey, hey, it's the monkeys. We grew up with them. We got to celebrate them. They were a horrible ripoff of the Beatles, but they were a popular TV show that we watched when we were kids, especially on Nick at Night. Yep, yep. Uh, I remember watching them a lot as a kid. And if we would have gotten our act together, we'd have done some kind of a montage where we're running across a map of the United States or something like that to a soundtrack. One of us on a tricycle, the other one doing some kind of a swim move or something. <laughs> Secret Origins, this is actually what the first Secret Origins that uh, the fourth in the Secret Origins series. It's Vigilante and Kid Eternity. Now, obviously not a high demand, but the Secret Origins, they tend to they tend to they tend to sell. So I I, I suspect someone's gonna be interested in this. Gold Age reprints. Yeah. Not much Batman this go around. Um, just too brave in the bulls, I noticed. I picked this one because it's Batman set in World War II. So it's Earth One Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, always cool. Uh, the Batman Sergeant Rock ones always uh, they just cool covers. I don't know, just exciting. Rawhide Kid. I picked this because it looks like it looks like looks like Jonah Hex is a talented <laughs> Rawhide Kid. <laughs> Every time I look, I pick that comic up. I'm like, "What the hell's Jonah Hex doing to Raw?" I get? Oh wait, <laughs> but it does look like they ripped off Jonah Hex and put him in the cover. I couldn't resist it because I'm a big Hex fan. And I was like, "Is that Jonah Hex?" I, at first, I thought it was a Jonah Hex, and then I said, "No, it's a Raw <laughs> Kid." What that? Wait, wait, that's the wrong company. <laughs> All right, next on the list. Captain Savage. Now, you're you, you. This should sell. I mean, this is the you know your 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 Sergeant Furry sell like like they sell instantly. There's an automatic buyer for them. You can't. You, you literally cannot get a bid in in the time that someone else can get a bid in on those. I Captain Savages are fun. They're the Marines. They're they they have Ben Grimm in them, and they have Ben Grimm's dad in it, and they're awesome. And if you're picking up the Sergeant Furies, you should give Captain Savage a try. Yeah, yeah. And if you're if you look closely enough, I think Sergeant Fury's in one or two of them too. All right. So I was picking the oddities of the week. This was like one that I picked as as an oddity, but really it's not an oddity. It's just basically it's 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 a classics illustrated of Jules Verne's Five Weeks in a Balloon. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was a uh, um, a publisher that picked up after uh, Classics Illustrated, or they just did their own. I mean, they they don't. It's I think it's in the public stories in the public domain, so I think anybody can do a you know do a reprint of it. And the oddity of the week is the Ring of Bright Water, the Adventures <laughs> of I can't even pronounce that. The most delightful, delighted otter in the world. He does look delightful. He does look delightful, but what the bleep? It was a Disney movie, probably, right? Probably. <laughs> it looks like it should have been. Yeah. All <laughs> right. That's this week's picks. Oh, so. Yeah, so. some good stuff coming up. 